super excited about this guest. He's one of my new faves because I saw him in a recent movie that he did and he was absolutely phenomenal. His name is Damilola Ogunsi, popularly known as the goldfish. And the goldfish is seated on my couch. Hello. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. How are you? It's <laughs> nice to be here actually. Uh -uh. That's your sweet accent. Can you do it again? Which one? The one I just... No, this is just me speaking normally. You know, it's nice to see you. It's nice to be here, actually. This is fun. <laughs> this looks like fun. Good to have you, Dami. Good to have you. How are you too? I'm good, though. So, we, a lot of you fell in love with him from Ajoche, but maybe you should wait to see Mokalik and you would fall in love over and over again. Yesterday, I had the privilege of having Shalewa on our show. Oh, and today, I'm having you. Both of you were on Ajoche as well. Yes, we were. What was your Ajoche experience like? Wow. Um... The Ajoche experience, when I when I got on set, I actually just traveled in back to the country and went straight to set and I was like, okay, so this is what we're gonna be doing. I've read the I read about my character. I was like, okay, how is this gonna be? Then I, I understood it was gonna be the whole year. But I got on set and I saw what they built and yeah, we're going back to like eighteen something, early nineteens before the you know white men came and before the amalgamation of Nigeria. It was a fantastic experience actually. Um it was that's my first epic ever. And I enjoyed my character. It was nice being, you know, being with all these other amazing people I've always wanted to work with. It was a good experience. It was tough. Oh. I'm like, it was that's tough. tough. Oh. That's the part I want to hear. How tough? It was tough. Man, it was really, for me, because we shot a lot in the sun, so I had to sunscreen a lot, you know, but um, then I had to cover my head, um, you know, go without shoes, shooting for a year without shoes. You had to put your foot in different things. But we were trying to tell a story. And um, for everything we did, all the pain, all the tears, all the hard work, all the sun, all the wahala, um, it was worth it. Indeed it was. It was worth it. It was. Congratulations on it. that. Thank you so much. Let's talk about your journey into acting. You know, you relocating back to Nigeria. Tell us the full story of how you decided to start a career in acting. Okay, so this is it for me. Um, since I was a kid, I've always been an entertainer. I've always liked to make people laugh, be the one who... Who is the jester? Who is the comedian and all that? So, um, since I started acting since primary school, I even still remember the title of my first play. I still remember lines from my first play. I think I was in primary five. This is our chance. Was that play? So all through primary school, secondary school, polytechnic, university, I've always been in drama. I've always been acting, doing stage and theatre. Um, I did for radio drama for BBC as well, BBC Media Action. Uh, then in church. So it's been always acting. And um, but I couldn't tell. My dad, you know, I couldn't tell my parents that I wanted to be an actor. It was there, but I couldn't say that this is what I wanted. So then I found my way into real estate, went to the bank for nine years. And at the point, I was like, look, it's either you go and do this or you don't do it. So in 2000, and, so I started doing movies in 2014. Then in 2016, I, you know, went to the New York Film Academy in Los Angeles to study acting for film. And I came back, resigned from my banking job. And May 20 makes it five years. So it's been fantastic. Um, it's been fantastic. I've had very good work. I've been quite blessed. Um, my second move, my second cinema movie is Mokalik. Yeah, I've been at George Sons of the Caliphate, and a, a host of other ones. I've done about twenty works now, and um, I'm excited. Look at you! It's what pursuing I want your to dreams. Do. Congratulations on that. How were you able to break the news to your parents? All the while, you were afraid to tell them that you wanted to be an actor. But even after they sent you to school, you've done real estate, you've done banking, you're working in a bank. They had a banker baby boy, and then you now <laughs> you know? decide, I'm done with this. I'm go I'm going to study, you know, in the, in the film academy. How did you break the news to them, and how did they receive it? Okay, so so this the, it actually came as a transition. Because I'd been emceeing, I also MC, so I'd been emceeing for a while, so they knew that part. So they actually knew that this guy has this tendency. So I started shooting a couple of films. But when I was going to go to film school, I think it was just, I'd done admission, I'd done everything, I'd bought flight tickets, I'd done everything, got my accommodation there. I think it was just a couple of days before going. I just had to tell them that I'm going to do this. And, you know, I was working in the bank then, I'm like... Even when I was doing my visa interview, the guy who interviewed me was like, you work in a bank, why do you want to go to film school? I was like, ah, you don't understand this thing. This thing is here. This thing is pushing me. So, and they were for it, okay. Then when I came, I left the bank. I didn't tell them immediately, to, you know, so nobody. So after a couple of months, and I told them that I have resigned from the bank. I'm sure they were shocked, but they got to accept that this is what he wants to do. So then when they now started seeing the works, my first movie after that was The Tribunal with Omotola that went to the cinemas and... Bang! That just pulled me out everywhere. And so Hold like, that thought. Let's check out his performance at the Tribunal. We have um, an excerpt from it. Then when we come back, we'll still be speaking some more with the Goldfish as he shares his journey through the Nigerian film industry. And that 
that's the excerpt <laughs> from the tribunal. How was that experience for you? Well, that was my that was one of my most emotional performances ever. Um, the story is it's not my story actually. I just you know I, I think I just got blessed that after I come back from film school. This is my eighth movie, and I just fit right in. I was a banker. I was, an, of course, I'm an albino, and um, well, a cute one like that, you know. A and, cute one. <laughs> you know, so and it, and, it, and it just fit in. And I went for the audition. Actually, there was an audition, and I came for it. And there were lots of other people, albinos there, but for this particular role, so I got the role, and um, it was emotional for me because, well, luckily for me, uh, I have a younger sister who's an albino as well. We were raised quite differently, so we didn't feel a lot of this pressures that, you know, unfortunately some other binos felt. Uh, we, we were raised with a different, with a, with a very healthy self-esteem. So we weren't raised to feel different, you know. So I, I couldn't relate too much with the experiences. So I had to also meet, I had to go to the Albino Foundation and actually meet with a couple of other people and actually hear the stories and look into their eyes. And I could see the pain in their eyes. And I eventually I was able to really connect deeply with how this character was feeling. And when I came back, you know, I was, I was, and all the, every, all the anger, all, all the times uh, my character got angry, I was actually angry in real life. I think mean, it was, all the emotions were actually genuine and it was fantastic. It did well at the cinemas and from there it's been, you know, and I, I feel so blessed. Interesting. I'm, I'm, that's, that's really a lovely thing that you had to go and speak with people who had these experiences. I was going to ask you if you had any of these experiences growing up, but kudos to your parents for the amazing work that they did in raising you and your sister. Welcome back to Hell and Nigeria. We're still speaking with superstar actor Damilola Ogunsi, popularly known as the Goldfish, Oche. the only Goldfish I know. Oh, she is super. Oh, she is actor. I mean, look at that fantastic performance you put up at the tribunal. Now you mentioned that you had to go and recount or feel the experiences of other people who were albinos living, or who are albinos living in Nigeria, for you to be able to deliver that character, just so that you could express their emotions. What would you say are some of the most um, the complaints that you see that a lot of them had to share, what, what would you, you say is the most challenge, challenging thing? Now, I know because in somewhere like Tanzania and some other parts of Africa, there are rumors or there are myths that say that, oh, the part of an albino is... It helps them to get money. And it helps them to get money. money. I don't know if that happens in Nigeria as well. So what would you say are some of the challenges that a lot of them shared with you? Well, actually, that, I've, I've heard of that. when I, heard of, I used to hear a lot about that growing up too, that you know, when you get a part of an albino, you can use it for rituals. And it's not really strong here as it is in Tanzania. Now, I'm also not going to divorce myself from maybe some of these experiences. But I think the difference is I grew up loving it. I grew up like, okay, because I didn't feel different. So I grew up loving it and appreciating it. And then because of the kind of person I am, I'm more of like, if you bring it on, I give it back to you. So it's like, I always have something to say. There's a retort. So, <laughs> and I enjoy it. So you sing Oibo Pepe. I, I dance to it. So it's something I like. It's, uh, I've, I've always embraced it. And okay, this is what makes me unique. I'm going to rock this. I'm going to make it the best anyone has ever seen. So I've had some experiences, but maybe not that bad because of my own personality. But I had to go and also talk to them. And some of the things I found is that, you know, people think um, they don't know anything, they can't do well, they don't fit. But now, I'll now go back to the real issue. I don't even really think the problem is with people. It's with the albinos themselves. The albino themselves. If people are raised with a good self-esteem, self it doesn't matter what people throw at you. So this is what I am on. This is why I'm also helping other albinos that, look, build your self-esteem. You can't tell the world what to do, but you can show the world yourself and look, this is me. Appreciate me for who I am. I've got the skill, I've got this talent. So I find a lot of people segregate them because of how they look, because of how they, people say different things that they smell in a funny way, which I don't know. I just believe that if you take care of yourself, if you put yourself out there, you, you, you are the one who showed the world that this is me. This is what I'm giving to you. This is, this, I've got this talent. Like if you don't give them out, they take it. If you don't give them out, they take it. They will not <laughs> take it now. They, you, so, so that's how it is. Okay, let's talk about your first, still speaking about your career, your first movie. Can you remember the very first movie you went for? Yeah, I can The audition? Remember. Yeah, the first movie I went for was by Tola Balogun, Binding Duty, 2014. 2014, May 19. So May 19 this year makes it exactly five years that I actually started to You film. have to celebrate after this interview. <laughs> we, we, we should, actually, we should. So that was the first one, then Papel Productions, Love Circle, then... Played a couple of many other different things as an assassin in one movie like this from uh, One Long Walk. So different things. Which would you say was the most challenging that took you out of character, totally opposite from who you are? 
I think that will have to be Ajocha. I mean, Ajocha, I played the role of an executioner. I, I never kill nobody. Yeah? <laughs> I never kill nobody. And this is an executioner who... But the thing I liked about my character is he has a good heart, but he's dark, he has a dark sense of humor, he, he's calculative, he sees everything, but he does as if he doesn't, you know, and so um, he, he's a dark character. He, he kills without emotions. He, he kills as a job. So somebody who can take a life without, when he kills, he just does it like, hey, um, so we're going out for a date in five minutes, I might just quickly kill this guy, then just goes, hangs him, okay, I'm done, hey, let's go. So it's... It, it, it was really a thing for me having to get into his mindset, the way he talks. Then I had to use a character voice because it, my voice is, would not have fit. So his voice goes, his voice has a deeper pitch like when he talks. He talks like with a lot of authority. Then his body language is always stiff. He's always, so it was something I had to live with. Then I had to do, be like that for a year. Then after the show, I was actually still like that for a while. I was going to ask you, how, how were you able to fit back into being yourself? You know, so, af well, after that, I just went out, uh, took a break, went out of the country, went for a holiday, was playing around, was playing, was looking for every opportunity to play and release, you know, release myself from it. Because I was always, there's a way he walks too. And I was, and I found myself always walking like that. And, you know, people would be like, okay, but I... He walks like he's proud. Not like he's proud, but he has authority. He has he works like he has authority. So that's a fantastic thing for him. We have had the pleasure of speaking with Dami Ogunsi. Thank you for sharing your journey with us. Thank you so much. The issue of self-esteem is something you've raised, and there are many people dealing with it. There are many people who are learning to love themselves, to accept themselves. What would you say to them? Well, to all those people, I like to let them know that. To all those people, I like to let them know that wherever <coughs> you are in the world. The first thing you need to do is look within. There's something special you have. There's something God has given you. And with that little, that little light of yours, if you let it shine, you can actually set the whole world on fire. So go for it. Go get it. And that's what you need. Preach, preacher. Hallelujah. There's something inside of you. If you look deep inside, if you will let that little light shine, you will set the world on fire. I'm definitely going to use that for an Instagram caption. So if you see it on my Instagram, just know I stole it from him. Thank you, you so much, Ghostface. Tag, you better tag me on the way you do that. Tag <laughs> caption inspired by the goldfish. Oh, shit. How can people follow you? I, well, uh, my Instagram uh, handle is the goldfish underscore 007. The T-H-E goldfish underscore 007. Twitter is... The Goldfish 007. I'm in love with James Bond. And I was um, going to ask you 007, 007 everywhere. I don't you see all my pictures that there's always one James Bond pose there. I have a feeling that because Hollywood is calling my name, mm. I can hear it. Because mm. that's where I'm going. Now you shall answer. I, Hollywood is calling all my right. name. All so. right, we are going to I'm following you to that Hollywood as Hollywood is calling you. I'm, I'm following you along. We need I need company. All right, thank you so much for joining us and thank you to you for making it a date with us on the show today. We'll be back again tomorrow and it will be Friday. But then remember to follow us on all social media platforms. Follow me at Olive MRD. Follow the goldfish at the goldfish underscore 007. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonga videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.